Mazda gave their all new CX-90 three row family hauler a super cool inline six turbocharged engine option that's paired up with a 48 volt mild hybrid system to help with smoothness and efficiency. So what does that all mean when you're cruising on the highway at steady state speeds for fuel economy? Well, tonight we're gonna find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the real world highway fuel economy test on the 2024 Mazda CX-90. In this test, we're gonna head out on the highway and do 50 miles out and 50 miles back, averaging 70 miles per hour to get a realistic fuel economy number for this uh, upper premium market midsize large crossover. <laughs> Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. This is the Turbo S model of the CX-90, which means we've got the high horsepower version of the Turbo Inline 6. Got it tucked in the shade here. We just shot our infotainment test. So if you do want to see that, check the link below. We've got a lot of coverage on this car as usual. We also got to see it at its reveal and also uh, on the first drive event. But this is the first time spending time with it at DMHQ. We're actually going to be putting some friends in the back of it and taking a trip this weekend. So my review is going to consist of a lot of real world use. I mean, maybe not real world with children, but real world driving with people. So if you do want to see that or any of our other videos, check the link below. So why do we do this test? Well, the EPA's highway fuel economy test, which gives this CX-90 28 miles per gallon, which remarkably is right in line with a lot of its competitors in this class, that test only averages 48 miles per hour. We know there are plenty of people who use their vehicles for longer road trips and would like to know what sort of numbers you can realistically expect here in the real world. So in order to test that out, we're gonna head over to the gas station. We're gonna fill up and go out and do 100 miles, come back, and then fill up at the same pump using the same three-click fueling method and get a result. Now the test is going to be done at nighttime because that's the only way that I can get some smooth, unbroken uh, highway action here without having any speed ups or slowdowns. A few other things to note for the test is the outside temperature will be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty, pretty predictable temperatures by the coast here. The tire pressures will be set at their door placard 36 PSI cold, and we're going to run the climate control at 73 degrees auto. So without any further ado, let's head to the gas station. Now I should note, Mazda has two different tunes for this inline six turbocharged motor. If you put premium fuel in it, you're going to get more horsepower and torque than with regular 87 octane. However, I don't know what's in the tank, so I'm putting in 87 octane and we're just going to go on the assumption that it's got the lower grade fuel in there. 2.383 gallons going in for our first fill and we've got our MPG readout reset, we've got our trip meter reset. GPS reset, climate control set at 73. We're ready to begin. Notice some pretty aggressive starts to this car. I don't know if the battery's a little low, motor's a little cold, or maybe that's just pretty normal, but interesting. A few different drive modes here in the CX-90. We've got normal, sport, and off-road. We're gonna be doing this test in normal. And we have the I stop on, so that's going to shut off the motor in certain situations. Now the goal of this test isn't to hypermile. We're not trying to get the best possible fuel economy for this car, but rather a realistic figure. So in order to do that, we're getting up to highway speed here at a reasonable pace, and we're gonna set our cruise control at a GPS indicated at 71 miles per hour. That should allow us to average 70 over the whole test. I'm realizing that I should have dropped the third row seats before doing this, because now I've got two headrests taking up my rear window back there, taking up visibility, and for some reason this car does not have a camera rear view mirror, something that I would want in my three row crossover. We can see the active driving assists moving around little car objects on the screen in front of us as we navigate our way through this still fairly busy 405 freeway. Looks like our speedometer is spot on. 71 on the dash is giving us 71 on our GPSs. I'm trying a new phone for a GPS here, but of course, don't wanna put in a new piece of technology without verifying it. So we're running it against our standard GPS. It looks to be pretty in line. That is interesting though, that, that it's an exact speed. Most cars read at least 
one mile per hour lower so to keep you from accidentally speeding. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe don't take your 690 to Germany. Initial highway impressions, pretty good. I, so far, having this car, I've been a big fan of the active driving assist. The lane keeping seems to be really good. We're gonna see right now, we're slowed down with the adaptive cruise control. I'm gonna signal the merge and the car accelerates nicely, gets behind the support. Road noise seems pretty good. Wind noise seems low as well. All right, well, we are gonna settle in here and continue on with the test. And we'll catch up with you at the end after testing this Bose sound system. If you wanna see that, check the link below for our members only test. And in the meantime, enjoy this time lapse of the entire trip. Coming into the end of the highway fuel economy test here in the Mazda CX-90 Turbo S. For some reason, there's just a lot of traffic on the road today. I mean, it's almost 10 o'clock to Wednesday night. There's still all this traffic everywhere. So there was more traffic than I would have liked. And that being said, if we get somewhere right around a bubble number, we're gonna drop down because the, the fuel economy went way up really quick. The EPA is 28 and we got all the way up to 32 and a half, I think at one point. And then from there, it's it's slowly dropped back down as we've kind of been making our way back up the five and the, into the 405 here. Man, you look at all of this traffic. In terms of highway competence, the car has done decently well. Not the most advanced active lane keeping system. It, uh, hard, steeper corners, not steeper, sharper corners. It has a little bit of trouble staying in the middle of the lane. Fortunately, it does give you a little indicator for a while before you gotta wiggle the steering wheel. Keep from the alert coming up. Road noise, again, seems adequate. There were, overall, it's a decently quiet vehicle, but a little bit of that cavernous echo going on back there. You're gonna kinda have that in a three row, but that is something to note. A little bit tender in the seat comfort. There's no thigh extension in it. There are a few of these little luxury sort of features that you expect luxury vehicles to have. And the CX-90 is in such a weird middle ground now that yeah, some of it, it feels and seems really luxurious, but then it's missing little things, like the fact we don't have dimming outside mirrors. I mean, you get that on a base model, Tesla Model 3, I'm pretty sure, at least the Model Y. So we don't have that in here, that's a bit frustrating. Like I said, no thigh adjustment, that's a bit frustrating as well. I can hear that semi-truck as we're passing. The ride is a bit crashy as well. There's, you just feel kind of rumblings through the car. There's not there's not a really smooth absorption happening of all the bumps. So there's a lot to like. I really like the the infotainment. I really like the sound system. I really like the gauge cluster and the general ergonomics. And I am really liking the fuel economy as well. We're still looking at 31.3, which is pretty darn good for a vehicle of this size and of this horsepower and for driving along at steady state highway speeds, I'm happy. I also like this nifty little uh, energy monitor under the information screen. We've got a fuel efficiency monitor right there, energy flow. You can see then as we get off the highway here, it's gonna regen a little bit into the battery, give us some electricity to work with. Taking a look at our tack shot, we are cruising at just a hair under 2,000 RPM. 
at 71 miles per hour. I think that's a pretty good place to be. And this engine makes enough torque, especially along with the electric assist, that it pretty much never leaves that top gear when you're cruising on the highway. So I'm sure that helps with efficiency. So we're gonna get the car back to the pump here and fill it up to see what sort of number we get. We ended up putting in 3.528 gallons for our final fill. And we've actually traveled 102.3 miles. 102.3 divided by 3.528 is given us. Okay, so yeah, quite a bit lower than the car's readout actually, but more in line with what I expected from the EPA. 29 miles per gallon, cruising at 70 miles per hour here for the Mazda CX-90 Turbo S. Now, the good news is, is theoretically, both the turbo and the plug-in hybrid models should get slightly better than that even. So 30 miles per gallon in a seven or eight seater family vehicle, that's pretty darn good. We've got an 18.5 gallon fuel tank in here. So 18.5 gallons times 29 miles per gallon is giving you an effective highway cruising range, of just over 530 miles here in the CX-90 Turbo Plus. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad that Mazda took a chance with this cool inline six turbocharged and mild hybrid powertrain and the fact that you can hang with the likes of Toyota and Honda and some of those other kind of larger mid-size crossovers I mean 30 is pretty darn good for a vehicle this size or 29 technically getting up in that range pretty darn good for a vehicle this size and this caliber so thank you all so much for watching if you do want to see more on the CX-90 check the link below and we'll see you on the next one I'm Charlie from Daily Motor and as always Drive on.